I'm Sarah from the upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you both today. How are you? We're good. Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Um, so obviously a lot of people might have already blitzed through the first season of Extraordinary, um, eagerly anticipating the second. Um, but for perhaps for those who are coming to it fresh, maybe you can set the scene. What's this world that they can enter into in the show? Um, world. What's the world? So it, it's a world in which at the age of 18, everyone gets a superpower. Um, and Jen, uh, who I play, for whatever reason, her character has not yet gotten a superpower and she's 25. So obviously that leads to a lot of feelings of like inadequacy and, you know, she's insecure about many things. But the fact that she now doesn't have a superpower, which everyone else in the world seems to have, makes her feel even more inadequate. And so the first season kind of follows um, her and her friends and then a new friend who they meet along the way. It follows them trying to find her power, but also kind of just trying to like figure their lives out in like a kind of confusing period of your life where you're like post university or just kind of didn't go to university or dropped out in Jen's case. And you're just trying to figure out how to live life. And it's all set in East London and it's really colourful and poppy. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant summary. Um, and I guess casting your minds back when you first read that script, I mean, the thing that really stands out to me is, you know, we've kind of been consuming stuff about superheroes, you know, from comics and films for decades and decades, but actually, you know, bringing something really fresh to the genre and really doing comedy and satire really well. I mean, we've got like the boys on, on Prime Video, but this is again, like a completely different kettle of fish. It just feels so unique. What, what did you think when you first read the script and why did you want to jump on board? Well, I, I think the thing that, that's really exciting about it is that it, it takes a fairly like realistic view, which is I think is 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 what makes it so funny about like if everyone in the world did get superpowers, like obviously the world would still be just as absurd and, mm. and chaotic and you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't solve people's problems. It would only mean that they're, how, all the ways in which we like screw up our own lives could only be made worse if we could also like fly around, like literally fly away from our problems, or like you know, go back in time and like correct mm. stuff. Um, and I I, th I think like the series plays so much with the comic possibilities, both like both like visually, but just just like in in generally like comically by what would happen if just in a very ordinary like normal world people suddenly had these abilities that didn't actually make them any better at dealing with problems in their life so yeah i think that that's what really drew me to it because every scene is like so packed with like so much invention um yeah and um coming to your character jen i mean i just love her so much and i guess kind of you know, in that really great way of having like a female protagonist, you know, that's not afraid to feel very real, flawed. I mean, a bit of Bridget Jones in there, maybe Fleabag, you know, Sharon Horgan's st style of comedy. Um, when you were approaching the character, you know, what did you think about her? How could you relate to her? Um, and what bits of her might have been quite different to you? I guess like, as you're mentioning all those characters, like the, th the thing that kind of unifies all those characters is this kind of they're they're not perfect or they're not you know pristine and primed which I guess is kind of the pressure that's put on a lot of women as well especially but a pressure that's put on us at, and, and I think in, in Jen's case she tries her best to be like that but just like it fails entirely so then I feel at this point of her life she's just completely given up on being anything other than a bit of a mess um, and I think approaching it, like, I mean, I mean, Emma's writing is so distinct and I think the jokes and the scenes are so clear and it felt like reading it, I don't know, it felt very early on that once we found out what the tone was, it kind of felt like everything else fell into place. Um, and I think with like with each other and like meeting the, the group that we were doing it all with, it felt so, I don't know, it felt like it kind of all slotted in quite easily that it's not like we had to sit down and say, oh, right, so is this the tone or how do we let that little joke land? It felt like it all kind of slotted in quite easily. So then the characters felt like they grew from that, from like how the group was formed. Some people ask me if you'd written it. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> telling people that. No. <laughs> what made it? Yeah. So, <laughs> how'd you get this idea? 
I mean, I was going to ask as well about delivering some of these lines. Maybe that's why people think you've written it, because it does just, you know, you pull it off so seamlessly. But you must have been internally maybe cringing. I don't know, even that opening monologue in the first season, you know, when she's, um, you know, in the job interview. Were there any bits that made you squirm? Um, did you have a favourite line? I mean, I feel like one of my favourite lines is ones that you say, and it's also Fia's favourite, is when um, you say, you want a bin to be your boyfriend. <laughs> it's a bit of a slap in the face, I'm not going to lie. Oh, <laughs> the way you say it, it's so sweet. I was so excited but, to say that line. And even that line, like, in what other context would that ever make sense? Yeah. Like, just, like, it's just so, there's so many lines that are stand out. There's, yeah, there's loads in the second season as well that, like, on their own are just so, so funny. Like, it's in the trailer, like, they don't even cover your bum hole. Like it's like even better, <laughs> even better for you, Luke. I guess yours is kind of you know a, a classic example of in this show things can be so absurd, but yeah. then they quickly almost just become real. You know the fact that you are the shapeshifter, you're a cat for a few years, you've lost touch with your family, and then sort of does go delve into sort of some very real issues about you know bonds you have with your son or you know like moving on from a relationship. So what was it like playing him? Yeah, I mean, like, it's, you because the show's funny, right? Because it, it feels like it kind of, like, eases you in. Like, you're just like, okay, so it's like these three, it's this one character. Okay, she's got these, like, housemates, and they've got this power. And at the end of the first episode, clearly there's this naked guy who, who's a cat. Um, and I suppose, like, everything's, you know, new to him. And in the second series as well, like, you, you know, e even as he's beginning to deal with, like, more human responsibility is like a like a relationship and like you say like his, like his history all of that stuff is like super uh new to him which which you, you know for me like this is like really the first like um big role i've ever played and uh all of that was new to me com completely and I, I was always like absolutely like rabbit headlights about everything so uh it made it like so so such a joy to play because i had no idea what i was doing so you know you never know yeah you never know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do, I do, make it, it look easy yeah all the way all the way through second series i refuse to learn anything <laughs> i was like oh, we're in the performance <laughs> so yeah and what about seeing your you know your guys relationship i guess develop in the second season how are you working on that together um and did you have some some favorite moments some favorite scenes we did like i was just thinking in rehearsals like um we kind of improv some of the scenes, particularly mm. like the scene when we go on the date in the first episode. Mm. We like improv, improv that a lot. And I think like those improvs are so like helpful. Like I, I guess it, it was helpful as well to think about what this relationship could be if all the obstacles that come up in the second season didn't come up. And I guess like that was kind of helpful to think about what I think from Jen's perspective, what she's expecting to happen. Like at the end of the first season, she's you know, got onto this course that's going to help her get her power. She's just got a boyfriend she's mad about. It's like, right, life's about to start. All the things, aspects of her life that she felt would never happen seem to be coming true. So I think that was helpful to think about, like, at the start of the second season, that she believes everything's going to be simple. And then obviously it's not so much so. Something I really liked was, like, there's so few scenes, I think, in this series where we actually do just get to be the two of us. And they're craving that. They? And, and yeah. loads of it, we shot, loads of those scenes we actually shot right at the beginning. So it felt like we had like this little thing that was like our, our little dream, which then yeah. because of the order in which we filmed it, that was like slowly like taken away from us. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Nice. Yeah. Um, but so the, the thing about filming a series is like so much of the work is done for you just by like the like the amazing work of like like the the art department and the mm -hmm. writing and the design like you know you find always finding yourself in these like bizarre situations which for me like I really feel helps I don't know like keep me alive to like what's going on in the relationship like something that's in the trailer is uh th this date we go on to where there's like we're eating giant spaghetti because it's like we've been shrunk into a tiny restaurant so so, so all the little italy so the <laughs> so the spaghetti is huge and then you have to try and eat this huge spaghetti but also try and look good and yeah that was my journey um, that's, <laughs> that's my process it's like can i have some spaghetti in the other scenes that would really help <laughs> um so yeah i don't know i, I think like all of that always keeps you alive to what is for both of them mm. you know for a character who has no real conception of what a relationship is and for a character who kind of also doesn't but no, yeah. reasons, like i don't know they're on such uneven ground mm. 
and I'm almost out of time, but just very quickly, you know, what do you hope people will take away? Because I guess, as we've said, it's, I mean, it's laugh out loud funny, um, but it does prod at lots of really relevant issues about being in your 20s and wanting to fit in and your identity and, um, you know, kind of makes you think about all that stuff of kind of coming of age. Um, so what do you hope people take away from watching it? I hope like I, I think most importantly, I hope it just makes people laugh and like gives people some joy because I think it is such a joyful show. But also like and then if they do find kind of deeper meaning in it, then amazing, like because it, it is very much there. I think like most of if it makes people because it because it, as you say, it's a show about kind of that period in your life in your 20s where you're just feeling lost. If it if it makes pe people feel a bit better watching other people go through that and realize that it's okay just to be a bit shit when you're in like your mid twenties, then I'd be delighted. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm out of time, but thank you so much for sharing all that with me. And I cannot wait for everyone to get stuck into the second season of Extraordinary.